beloved citizens, as you are aware, I am an on United Nations consultant on global immigration as it pertains to man and beast. I find that these two issues have parallel accomplishments because both forms are as a result of searching for food and shelter and uh, running from predators. The Secretary General for the ON United Nations requested me to have discussions with the Prime Minister of Barbados to resolve issues pertaining to immigration as they affect citizens, particularly from Guyana and Jamaica. These member states had lodged complaints to the ON United Nations citing the deplorable treatment meted out to their citizens as they sought to enter Barbados as tourists. As an immigration specialist and human and animal refugee expert, I agreed to meet with the Prime Minister. When I arrived at Grantley Adams International Airport, the local on United Nations officials were not there to welcome me. The Beijing immigration officials refused to let me call the UUN office and laughed at my request to contact their Prime Minister's office when they noted my Guyanese nationality on my on United Nations diplomatic passport. To make matters worse, when they examined my suitcase and saw all the tools, they decided that I was a carpenter trying to enter the country without a work permit. Uh, incidentally, en route to Barbados, I stopped in New York and took advantage of the bad economy to purchase cheaply some tools from a closing hardware store. I showed them my other documents confirming my identity as a roving on United Nations ambassador. But it made no difference. They slit my suitcase and found a few grains of rice that even the great leader Kim Jong-un had overlooked when I had traveled there. As indeed I had a packed itinerary and had no wish to be without my Guyana brown rice. And would you believe it? They then declared that I was also an illegal rice trader who wanted to manipulate the local rice price in favor of the Guyanese market. Citizens, I have never felt so insulted and demeaned in all my life if they did not take away my phone and handcuff me to a bench, I would have called the Secretary General to remove Barbados from the list of civilized nations. Hm. Citizens, these Bajan immigration officials had me handcuffed. Yes, your own Dr. Seelan know it all, handcuffed to what they call the Guyana bench at the Grantley Adams International Airport. They said this was a, a Guyanese bench to welcome all Guyanese who wanted to enter Barbados as tradesmen, tourists, or farm workers. This was no Guyanese bench. Guyana has hard wood, and this bench was made of soft Bajan wood. Inscribed on the bench were names of previous unfortunate Guyanese occupants. Singh, Samson, Ramful, Rawlings, Ramjatan, Bipat, Bovil, Hoyt, Hanuman, Tulsi Ram, Trotman, and so on and so on. On this bench, I found a Guyanese man sound asleep. When I woke him up, he introduced himself as the mango seller, Siraton Jones, from Paradise. Sirotan Jones had come to Barbados as a tourist, but was denied an entry permit. Like me, he was waiting for the next flight to be deported to Guyana.
Siratan jumped up suddenly and ran out of the immigration office with two Bajan immigration officials in hot pursuit. <coughs> Excuse me. Across from the Guyana bench was another bench that we refer to as the Jamaica bench. But this bench was covered with crime scene tape. A few handcuffed Jamaicans were sitting on the floor in front of their bench. When I inquired why they weren't sitting on the bench, they informed me that it was a crime scene and that the bench was an exhibit in a court case. Allegedly, an immigration official had used her finger to sexually abuse a poor Jamaican woman. The handcuffed Jamaicans, unfortunate ganja users, were very indignant. The immigration official was so craven, crass, and inconsiderate that she did not even put on a condom on her finger. About 20 minutes later, Siratan Jones came running back breathless. He said that he had run around the island and he had even run past the supermarket that purchased his mangoes. Siratan said that his rice field was bigger than the island. If he knew that Barbados was so small, he would have occasioned in Wakenham instead. By then, a crowd of people entered the room. The local on United Nations official accompanied by the Prime Minister's assistant had come to seek my release. The head of the customs unit brought my luggage and advised by Siratan and the Jamaicans, I ordered them to open my suitcase. To my surprise, three hammers and a rotary saw were missing. When I told the custom official that I will hold the government of Barbados responsible for the un-United Nations property, he summoned the two officers who had seized my suitcase. The rotary saw was found in the shorts of one, and the hammers were found strapped to the legs of the other. Siraton Jones explained that that is how the customs at the Chedi Jagan International Airport operate also. These two officials were fired on the spot. With my property returned, and in the capacity of an immigration expert, I asked why these men were detained, and asked to see the papers they tendered to the Barbadian immigration. Siratan had declared that as a mango seller, he was visiting Barbados on the invitation of a supermarket owner. Siratan had also declared 3,000 US dollars on his form. When Siratan asked for his wallet, we only discovered 50 US dollars. We reviewed the security tapes and saw another custom agent pocketing the rest of Siratan's money. He too was instantly fired. When I asked why the two Jamaicans were sitting on the floor, I was told that there was no other Jamaica bench. I had to point out to the Prime Minister's representative that Barbados was a signatory to CARICOM and that Jamaicans and Guyanese should, in true CARICOM spirit, share the same facilities. That also include benches. The pleased Jamaicans happily joined Siratan on the Guyanese bench and asked me to review their case. The Bajan immigration claimed that the Jamaicans were marijuana smugglers. But when I checked their declaration forms, I determined otherwise. The Jamaicans declared that they were in Barbados for a spiritual revival and had brought two packets of Jamaican religious weed. Under international law, the Jamaicans were not doing anything illegal. They had declared their weed and were not smuggling. I asked for these men's weed to be returned, but from the eyes of the customs chief, I knew that the evidence had already gone up in smoke. <laughs>
the Prime Minister's assistant pulled me aside and informed me that if I insisted, they would have to fire the entire customs unit at the airport, and that would cause the airport to be shut down. Hmm. The assistant called the Prime Minister, who agreed to accept Sirton Jones and the Jamaicans as his house guests, if I agreed not to create an international incident. I instructed the immigration chief to purchase a bench more fitting to the values of Guyanese, and he admitted that the government lacks the funds to purchase such a bench. I took my phone and called the owner of a woodworking shop in Charlestown, who agreed to build a suitable bench. I agreed to pay for the bench and allowed the immigration chief to give the shop the measurements and style of the bench. Citizens, I am pleased to inform you that yours truly, Dr. Silal Know-It-All Immigration Expert and CARICOM Protector, was able to extract a new agreement with the government of Barbados with regards to immigration within CARICOM nations. <laughs> If you have no money, do not go to Barbados. If you have little money, go to Wakenham. According to the mango seller, Sirton Jones, who has sped around Barbados, Wakenham is bigger and more scenic. If you have lots of money, visit another country. As I was leaving Barbados two weeks later, an important news story was developing. A wooden bench manufactured in Guyana was sent to the Grantley Adams International Airport Chief Immigration Officer. When customs inspected this bench, they discovered two kilograms of coking in the hollowed out legs of the bench. Police have held the Chief Immigration Officer for questioning as they importation documents showed that he had ordered the same bench. The bench is now covered in yellow tape and would be tendered as evidence. That is another reason why you should reconsider going to Barbados without a suitable Guyanese bench. Your stay at the airport would be very unpleasant. Beloved citizens, as you can see, your foundation is enormously important in your lives here or overseas. You too can receive legal protection like Sirton Jones, the mango seller, and become a guest of another country. All you have to do is to call the number flashing on your screen and pledge yourself to a better world. This is Dr. Silal Know-It-All wishing you good luck. With me on your side, only your mother-in-law can be against you.